Hello, and welcome to the worship of God at First Baptist Church Weaverville. We are so glad that you have joined us in this worship time today. Wherever you are watching this from, your presence is here with us, and the Holy Spirit connects us all. So thank you for taking time out of your schedule to join us as we worship the Lord together today. Let me begin with some announcements, some things I want to bring to your attention. Uh, remember our good summer schedule these days. There are many ways that folks of every age can get together and catch up and hang out online over Zoom. Or if you uh, can't participate with a computer or a smartphone, you can call in with just a landline if you want to participate that way. Adults get together Sunday mornings at 1030 for a time of fellowship and to hear a devotional thought. Kids get together Wednesdays at 6.30, and youth get together Thursdays at 6.30. So check your emails, the church emails that get sent out on Tuesdays and Fridays for the Zoom login info for those. Also, every week this summer on Wednesdays, we are serving food lunches at Black Locust Trailer Park, just right down Merriman Avenue. Uh, from us here in Weaverville, and we invite you to help and participate. It's a good time of fun and of service. That's 1115 to 115 every Wednesday throughout the summer. Uh, if you do want to come on Wednesday to help out and chip in, you can let us know here at the church, or you can just show up. Uh, do bring a mask if you come, and the folks who are helping there will show you how we do the lunches because it's a little different this year because of the coronavirus than in years past. But it's still fun and it's still a great ministry, so you're invited to help out with that. Also, I'm really looking forward to next Sunday evening. We are having a discussion over Zoom, a, a good thoughtful discussion about the movie Just Mercy. All the movie companies have made that film available for free during the month of June to encourage and to help people watch it so everyone can have an opportunity. It's a movie about a young lawyer who takes up the case of a man on death row who's been wrongfully accused of murder. So it's a uh, hard movie, but an inspiring one as well. So we encourage you to watch it. Uh, it's free. Redbox streaming online, Amazon streaming online, it's free. Uh, if you want a hard copy rental, then let the church know and we can get you a free rental code so that you can check it out from the Redbox and watch it. And then join us next Sunday evening at 6 p.m. over Zoom. We'll have a really good uh, faith-based discussion. How can we respond? What can we learn? How should it inspire us uh, as we learn things about justice system and how people of color are treated, uh, really uh, thoughtful things to be thinking about. So do watch that movie. There's many ways to watch it. Check the church emails for information on how to watch it and then how to participate in the Zoom meeting. If you're not getting the twice weekly church emails, do send us a message, info at fbcwbl.org. As always, the uh, order of worship for our service today is found in the description. Below the video, you might need to click on the see more arrow to open up our order of service below the video. And starting this week, there'll be some more helpful links there at the top of our order of service. Uh, you can go there, look at those links. And normally uh, when we have in-person worship, we have care cards that we pass around. So now we have online care cards. There's a link if you are new to the area or new to the church. We would love to get to know you better. So there is a guest information uh, online form for you to say hello. If you have a prayer concern that is on your heart, we would love the opportunity to be praying about it with you and for you. So you'll also see a link down there for an online prayer request form. There's also a link for people to give online offerings and tithes and donations so you don't have to go fishing around for other links to find web pages for those they're all right there at the top of the order of service so do look over those when the prelude music plays look over our order of service today and get everything ready that you will need to participate in worship as you hear the music take the opportunity to pass the peace of christ jot a note down to someone to check on them and see how they're doing or make a note to call and check on someone later so that you can stay connected and share some peace with others. And then 
when you are ready, sit, still yourself, still your soul and your spirit so that you are ready to worship the Lord today. So come, let us worship the Lord together. We sing together our hymn of adoration, Praise Him, Praise Him.
Today's New Testament reading comes from Romans, verses 8, 22 through 28. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved, Now hope that is seen is not hope, for those hopes for what is seen. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I would like to invite all of our children forward for our special children's time. Good morning, friends. Uh, this morning, we are going to continue our conversation about the matriarchs and patriarchs of our faith. If you remember last week, we talked about the mother and fathers of our faith, the early people um, in the world that believed in God and passed on the stories of God to their children who then passed it down to their children. And if you remember uh, the characters that we learned about last week, we had Abraham and Sarah and their son Isaac and Isaac's bro older brother Ishmael and Ishmael's mother Hagar. And we heard the really cool story about how Hagar uh, named God El Roy, the God, I can see the God who sees me. And uh, we remember that God always sees us and always hears us. Well, today we're going to continue that story, and we are going to follow Isaac. Um, so we're going to continue the story, and Isaac is now older. And unfortunately, um, his mother has passed away, so Sarah has passed away. And his father Abraham um, wants him to find a wife and to get married and to have a family of his own. And so this is the story of how Isaac meets his wife, Rebecca, a steadfast love. As Rebecca gathered water from the well near her home, she didn't see him watching her, but he had been walking for miles to find her. As Abraham's most trusted servant, he had been sent out to find a wife for Abraham's son Isaac, and he prayed that God would reveal the right woman to bring back to Canaan. He had finally reached Nahor, Abraham's hometown, and he prayed for wisdom on what to do next. Lord, show your steadfast love to Abraham today. If I am speaking to the woman who is supposed to be Isaac's wife, I will ask her for a drink of water, and she will offer me some from the jug on her shoulder. Then she will offer to get me more from the well in order to water the ten camels that are with me. He hadn't finished speaking to God when he saw her, and even from a distance he could see that she was beautiful. As she filled the jar and began walking home, he stopped in front of her and asked for a drink. Rebecca was anxious to serve him and immediately gave him as much water as he needed. He waited, 
his heart pounding as she gently spoke. And your camel, sir, please let me fetch more water for them as well. Rebecca hurried to the well again, balancing the heavy jar as he marveled at what the Lord had done. She was the one. The servant reached into his bag and took from it a ring and two beautiful golden bracelets. He held them out to her, asking if he might stay the night with her family. Abraham wanted his son to marry someone from their very own family, from their very own town, and now his servant was standing in front of a stranger, who was God's answer to that prayer. As soon as she told him the name of her father, he was sure. The Lord had led him here, and his steadfast love for Abraham would surely bless the rest of his journey. Rebecca raced home with the bracelets on her arms, gasping for breath as she told her family of the man by the well. When he arrived, he told them the story from the beginning, explaining that his master was a great and powerful man who had the favor of God. As he told them about the water and the way Rebecca spoke, they nodded and smiled. The Lord himself had certainly ordered his steps, and now she would return with him to Canaan and become Isaac's wife. The next morning, the servant wasted no time. Please send me home to my master. Rebecca's family wanted her to stay at home a few more days, but Abraham's servant was anxious to get home and tell his master everything. Not even a day ago, Rebecca had simply gone to fill a jug of water from the well as she did every day. Now her family was sending her away with their blessings and love. They called to her, explaining that the servant wanted her to leave immediately. Will you go with this man, they asked. It was undeniable that God's steadfast love had designed this moment, and she spoke quickly, realizing she was being written into a much grander love story that she could have ever imagined. I will go. As those three words fell from her mouth, the camels were ready, and her family prayed for her on the other side of the desert. She and her nursemaids climbed into the camels' backs, followed the stranger straight into God's plan. The steadfast love of God would bring them safely to the edge of Canaan as the first of the stars appeared in the sky. Rebecca saw a man in the distance. Who is that man? she asked. Abraham's servant smiled. That is the man you will marry. Her heart beat faster as her fingers reached for the veil on her head covering her face so he wouldn't see her until they were married. She listened as Isaac spoke with his father's servant, and she watched as Isaac's eyes dance with joy over her. Isaac took Rebecca as his wife, and they began to build their life together, praying that one day soon they would have a family of their own. <clears throat> will you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you for answered prayers, and we thank you for your grace and that you are always watching out for us and um, for the love of family. Amen. Now may we join our voices together in singing, Speak, O Lord.
watching and participating in our worship services throughout this pandemic season, you might have noticed that I'm not wearing a jacket anymore. In fact, I've rolled my sleeves up, and there's a reason for that. It started to get warm here in the summertime, and if you've been reading our church emails, you know that the air conditioning units for our sanctuary were put in when the sanctuary was built in 1974. So they've done great, but they're getting tired. And it's hard to keep the sanctuary as comfortable as it needs to be. It's a blessing that right now not many folks are in the sanctuary, but when we allow more folks to come back in, when we reopen the church in the near future, we want it to be comfortable. We want people to feel welcome and at ease. So we need your help. The church is starting a fundraising campaign so that we can raise the monies that we need to buy new up-to-date air conditioning units. Fortunately, it will save us money in utility costs month to month. It will be a little more uh, energy uh, sustainable which we'll be thankful for, but we do need your help. So we invite you to help in that good cause. We recognize that it might not be the most serious or pressing need in the world these days, we understand. But like I said, we want our beautiful sanctuary to be a comfortable, welcoming space where we can reopen our doors responsibly in the near future. So we invite you to help with that cause, but we invite you to help with any way that God is at work in our world. So like I mentioned earlier, you can click on the offering link that is below this video, and you can give tithes and offerings right now during the offertory music time, or find other ways that you can support what God is doing, whether in our community or around the world. So as the music plays, make plans to give, to contribute, to make a difference, and to give back because we have been given so much. And may God bless the offerings that we can give today.
a time in our service each week that we lift up prayers for others in our world. As Pastor Stewart mentioned before, at the beginning of our order of worship is an opportunity for you to fill out a prayer request. Um, we would be honored to pray with you and for you, whether it be concern or praise. Please fill that out. You can do that anonymously or you can list it. Um, we can share it with the church family and all pray with you, or it can be anonymously and sent to our pastor along. And please know that we love you and are praying for you earnestly all throughout the week. Today is Father's Day, and just like we did on Mother's Day, we acknowledge that this day can be both joyful and painful. And today we celebrate together the wonderful men in our midst, and we mourn with those that find this day difficult. Fatherhood is a special task and a high calling. We appreciate all of you that serve as fathers and leaders in our lives. Will you please bow with me as we pray together this special blessing for families on Father's Day. God of love, today we ask your blessing on all who give their lives with a father's love. Bless new fathers and wise grandfathers. Bless loving uncles and caring godfathers. Bless fathers who await the birth of their child with joy. Bless men who did not expect or want to become fathers. Bless men who embrace fatherhood through adoption or foster parenting, remarriage or single parenthood. Bless men still waiting and hoping to become fathers. Bless fathers whose work takes them away from their children. Bless fathers whose work is with their children. Bless fathers whose lives are shaped by war, poverty, or violence. Bless fathers who work for peace, freedom, and justice. Bless teachers and mentors who serve as father figures. Bless priests and ministers who lead as loving parents. Bless men who are separated from their children by force or choice. Bless families without fathers and all who love in abundance in their absence. Bless fathers who have lost a child. Bless families who have lost their father. Bless all whose fathers were loving. Bless all whose fathers failed to meet their needs for love. Bless all who celebrate today. Bless all who struggle today. In the name of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. In his hand, he's got the birds and the bees. 
During the summer, we are taking the opportunity to read some of the earliest stories in the Bible. And we find that many of them are stories of people who weren't perfect. But these are the first heroes of the Bible, so how could they be imperfect? Well, it's because they are people and because they are families. So we will find a lot of connections between then and now. What's so amazing in these stories is that God keeps working with them and blessing them despite their mistakes, missteps, and false starts. Last week we read about how Abraham, the father Abraham, got manipulated into first having a child with his wife's servant Hagar, and then kicking Hagar and their son out into the desert. So he definitely did not deserve any Father's Day cards that year for sure. But God's grace was still the undercurrent of that story because God promises, despite bad decisions and manipulations and exploitations, that good can still come from any situation. That's what our New Testament reading in Romans reminded us of, that God is always working for our good, even when we do things that make our lives or others worse. God is always trying to help us even when we are hurting ourselves by the decisions that we make. God blesses us in spite of ourselves. So, in the story last week when Abraham kicked his firstborn son and Hagar out into the desert, God promised to bless both Hagar and her son, and God promised to bless the son that Abraham had with his wife, Sarah. As Regina reminded us, that son was named Isaac, which in their Hebrew language means laugh, because Sarah laughed at the thought of God blessing her with a son in her old age. What a crazy idea, she thought. But God's plan often involves crazy-sounding ideas. In today's verses, we catch up with Isaac as a young adult, and we see how God's grace has been working. Abraham wants to be a helpful father and find Isaac a good wife. So, here in Genesis chapter 24, Abraham gives the chief servant of his household a most important mission. This is the guy who is in charge of everything in the home. He's like the Mr. Carson in Downton Abbey. This is the most important person that Abraham can send. Abraham sends him back to the land where he, Abraham, grew up and where some of his extended family still live to find a wife for Isaac. So the servant travels back to the town of Nahor, in the land of Aram, with lots of camels, and he stops at a spring. Here is what he says. This is a reading from Genesis 24, verses 42 to 49, and then 57 to 67. Abraham's servant said, When I came to the spring today, I said, O Lord, God of my master Abraham, if you will, please grant success to the journey on which I have come. See, I am standing beside this spring of water. If a maiden comes out to draw water and I say to her, please let me drink a little water from your jar. And if she says to me, drink and I'll draw water for your camels too, then let her be the one the Lord has chosen for my master's son. Before I even finished praying in my heart, Rebecca came out with her jar on her shoulder. She went down to the spring and drew water, and I said to her, Please, give me a drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I'll water your camels too. So I drank, and she watered the camels also. I asked her, Whose daughter are you? She said, the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Nahor, whom Milcah bore to him. Then I put a ring in her nose and the bracelets on her arms, and I bowed down and worshipped the Lord. I praised the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, 
who had led me on the right road to get the granddaughter of my master's brother for his son. Now, if you will show kindness and faithfulness to my master, tell me, and if not, tell me, so I may know which way to turn. Then Rebecca's family said, let's call the girl and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, will you go with this man? I will go, she said. So they sent their sister Rebecca on her way, along with her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. And they blessed Rebekah and said to her, Our sister, may you increase to thousands upon thousands. May your offspring possess the gates of their enemies. And then Rebekah and her maids got ready and mounted their camels and went back with the man. So the servant took Rebekah and left. Now Isaac had come from Beer Lahai Roy, for he was living in the Negev desert. He went out to the field one evening to meditate, and as he looked up, he saw camels approaching. Rebekah also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from her camel and asked the servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? He is my master, the servant answered. So she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isaac all he had done. Isaac brought her into the tent that was his mother's Sarah, and he married Rebekah. So she became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. May God bless the reading of this holy word today. So here we find two more people who are blessed by God, even though they haven't earned it or deserved it. We don't know very much about them, Isaac or Rebecca. We know that Rebecca seems like a nice girl since she offered to give water to a thirsty traveler and give drink to his camels as well. So she is proof of the verse in Hebrews 13, 2 that says, We should show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have entertained angels without knowing it. And in this story, Abraham's servant is like an angel to Rebecca. He changes her life. One day she's going to the well to get water like always, and the next, she's marrying into the family of patriarchs, remembered forever, having her story in the Bible for millennia. And she becomes a mother of a nation, all because she helped somebody out. So the next time you see somebody who could use a drink of water, or some food, or just a helping hand, that encounter might just change your life. Stories like this and stories like the burning bush remind us, always stop and check. Always be willing to pause and check on someone. So, okay, everything is perfect now for these two lovebirds, right? Maybe I just didn't see a verse that said, and they lived happily ever after. No, there's not a verse that says that. Remember, these are still people, and they're still a family. What seems or starts perfect doesn't stay perfect. The love and passion of newlyweds is wonderful and exciting, but that wedding day excitement doesn't last forever. Pretty soon you realize that person you married, they're kind of weird, and they do things that bother you. Worse yet, they're starting to realize that you're weird too. So you think, well, is everyone's family like this? And the answer is, pretty much, yes. Because nobody is as normal as we assume everyone is. Next week, we'll read about Isaac and Rebecca's children. They had twin boys. Isaac liked one more, and Rebecca liked the other more. So Rebecca helped the son that she liked deceive Isaac when he was old and blind to the detriment of her other son, which is terrible. These are the patriarchs and matriarchs of our faith? Yes. And I think they're okay. Not because they are models of perfection, they are not but because they are models of trying to follow God even after you fail 
in following God. They model the ups and downs of life. They model being imperfect as they walk in their relationship with the Lord. You see the wonderful times when something great happens that they weren't expecting, like what happened to Rebecca here, the sweet times of love and marriage. But you also see the less than pleasant times when they're scared, when they act out, when they're not sure if God can really be relied on. And if so, how? Especially when life wasn't looking the way that they thought. It's in families where you get to see the whole width and breadth of being human, the good and the bad. I think being a parent myself, being a father, highlights both my best and worst tendencies. I have learned things about myself, being a father, that I didn't know and I wouldn't have known otherwise, for better and for worse. Being a father has helped me to realize and develop more of my strengths and acknowledge more of my weaknesses. And being a parent always keeps me grounded. If I ever get too proud of myself, parenting has a knack of knocking you off your pedestal and yanking you back onto the ground, often with a bruise somewhere to show for it, usually in the face probably the nose. But then if I start to get too down on myself for not being the perfect dad, there is the unconditional love and grace of a child that reminds me it'll be okay. We'll get through it. Being a parent offers constant daily reminders and lessons about grace. It's remarkable. I've learned more about grace being a parent than I ever thought. That's why it's good that these family stories are included in the Bible, to show us where we come from and that we come from people. We come from families and they were imperfect, like us. They made mistakes and bad decisions, like us. They were abused and unloving at times. But through it all, God's grace is the undercurrent of their story and of our story. Even if it's not easily noticed at first, because God promises us, despite manipulations and exploitations and bad decisions, that good can still come from any situation. And not only can good come from it, but God will use you to make it happen. You might think, use me, the Lord above, to make good happen from bad situations? Don't make me laugh. But it's true. Although it sounds like a crazy idea, God's plan often involves ideas that sound crazy, using people who seem ordinary and God works the extraordinary through them. And that's what God wants to do through you. So be ready. Let's pray. Oh God, we confess that in our limited view of life and what is possible, we have often laughed away your plans and your dreams for us. Because we think that since we're imperfect, we are unable to be used to do great things. But you remind us in your word over and over again that that is not true. So remind us today that there is always grace, even though we have failed and fallen in the past, even though we will fail and we will fall more in the future, your grace is always there. Your grace is the undercurrent of our story, and you are wanting to use us to do great things. Let us never forget, but let us always be ready. Amen. Now is the time in worship that we respond to what God has been speaking to us today.
One way that we respond is in song. So our hymn of response is, The Love of Jesus Calls Us. And I invite you to spend time praying and thinking about what your response will be this week. Maybe it's a decision that you want to make for your life, your faith, to start a faith journey with the Lord, or to start walking with this church, or another way that you can respond to be the best follower of God that you can be in our world today. Whatever it is, I encourage you to spend time thinking about how you will respond to God this week. Now we sing our hymn of response, The Love of Jesus Calls Us. Let us sing together. so much for joining us in worship today. Your participation and your spirit were blessings to us and to the Lord, and we are thankful for them. Even though we are not in the same place, the Holy Spirit connects us all. So do make sure that you stay connected these days with each other and with the church. Let us know how you're doing. Reach out to us and to others around you. It's important to stay connected and to stay updated 
on how life is going in our families and in our community. Remember that wherever you are, wherever you are watching this from, you are not alone. You are loved by God and by us. So be healthy in body and in spirit. And now, go in peace, and as you are going, know this. By the grace of God, you are brought into this world. By the mercy of God, you have been sustained to this very moment. And by the love of God, fully revealed in Jesus the Christ, you are being redeemed now and forevermore. Amen. Now let us hear and sing together our benediction song. Walk in the spirit of love. Walk in the spirit of love. Love one another as Jesus loves you. Walk in the spirit of 